Carthage at war, but their hatred allows us to advance unopposed. We shall use our large navy to claim the Mediterranean. It is time for Massalia to rise. If you haven't heard of our proud city before, then I won't blame you. Centuries ago, Ionian settlers landed at our humble shores. Over time we have now grown into an independent state of our own, yet the power we possess is diminished by our alliance with Rome, forged by our ancestors. But the foolish Romans have begun spilling blood with Carthaginian sea dogs. This is the perfect opportunity for Massalia to surpass the two superpowers of the known world. While they focus their forces on one another, we need to expand our sphere of influence. The small Gallic settlements to the west should suffice. Oh, and before I forget about it, I'm a nobody, just a simple storyteller who decides the fate of this former colony, now turned nation. Even though the rulers of Basali began investing in everything, housing, wharves, barracks and soldiers, the population was limited. One of the many disadvantages of being a former colony. Cell swords were needed. That and locals. Their thirst for war is apparently enough for them to turn on their own people. I mean, I can't blame them. Their tribes are a disgrace especially the Allobroges to the north. It was a long march up there, but once we did, our infantry could just deal with them easily. Our massive ballistae could hurdle large boulders at the enemy, crushing their bones on impact. Once they actually tried to break our lines, they ran straight into our wall of skilled hoplites. We did have the occasional show-off guy who aspired to achieve glory in the name of Ares or something by going out of formation. But they would just be punished afterwards once the attack was over. After raiding and demanding able men to join our ranks from Lugdunum, the Massalian general disbanded his mercenaries. Loyal or at least people with an honest reason to fight for us is always better than men who are only in search of gold. Hence the Massalian mercy proved useful for more than just diplomacy. On their way back home, the Massalian general Eumenes followed the Rhone river. Along the way a scout reported most of the Volcae, the dominant tribe of Nemosas, had left to go further inland. Taking the opportunity of a lifetime, these citizens now serve the fast-growing Greek power. So far, the two recently occupied towns' foremost skills were farming and food production. Although it isn't gold, this gives us enough supplies to follow the Volke, who we just made an act of war upon. The second army was formed in preparations for the imminent conflict. After a short winter, the Massalian forces could finally advance. But after they got near the town of Tolosa, the main defensive army had left. Again. I don't know what is going on. I can only imagine the rumors of our Greek fighting skills proceed us. With that, we were now the only rulers of Transalpine Gaul. Some may say it's an achievement in itself, yet that goal is only for mere short-sighted people with a lack of ambition. Achaeans, cowards who bow down to Rome as well. If you wish for peace, prepare for war. We must push on. The Massalians believed the best place to establish its strong foundations for their future empire would be around the Pyrenees mountains. 
It could act as a natural wall, helping with the protection of their core regions. But if this is to be done, their source of strength from the Mediterranean will be left behind, for now. If this is to work, the Massalians had to train the Gauls to fight like true Greeks and give them proper armor to appear like one. May they serve us well. Eumenes executed the last Volcay forces traveling in our lands. Next up is the Tabali tribe. The first of their forces to fall was a small battalion caught outside of the town. It might have been a training camp or hunting party, I don't know. And it doesn't matter, as our forces massacred the town. It gave us a lot of food and gold to pay for even more men. But now the Vascones, an ally of the tribe we just occupied, started raiding our newly conquered lands. I don't get why though. These lands they are raiding are locals of their former ally. They weren't hurting us, but their former friends. Pathetic. They even had a decent fighting force of over 10,000 men compared to our just 6,000. But as they were kept separate, we could just win on the field, with both superior fighters and outnumbering them. As soon as the snow started to fall, we rushed to the Irona fortress, a perfect place to launch an invasion into Hispania Siteria and complete the foundations we so greatly desire. By the same time, the Massalian fleet embarked as well. If they could create enough havoc at the port of Sicis, taking over Salduba and Ilerda further inland would be easy. Ambassadors of the Cantabria and Arthavacci showed up as well. They claimed to be the strongest and most dominant tribes of Iberia. Eumenes, the general in charge of the interactions, saw no reason to doubt their words. Trade agreements were made, forming an unofficial alliance, for now, as long as they have proven useful to Massalia. The Cantabri did march a large army over to the river, marking the border of our territory. But after Eumenes placed his own on the opposite side, in a show of strength, the Iberians withdrew. It was quite a gamble. The Massalian's forces were halved due to the recent fighting. Thanks Zeus for the intimidating reputation of the Greek soldiers. With the western border secure for now, our expansion could continue. But the war actually began at sea, while the Massalian navy caught an Iberian transport outside of their town. The galleys sailed as fast as nature allowed them to. If the enemy returned to land, it could make our situation much worse. Thankfully, the Iberian ships weren't built for combat, allowing our ramp to crush their ships. Hit a galley once, then move on. Easy as that. Some of them even tried to jump onto one of our ships, but failed miserably. A battle as important as this one didn't take more than 3 minutes. The Greeks in Athens called this a heroic victory, but every citizen of Massalia knew the power and sovereignty they possessed at sea. Massalia laid siege to the port in hopes of disrupting their trade. But there was an uneasy scent in the air. The Carthaginian elephant shitter Hannibal Barca was moving around in the province. Don't be fooled, the Massalians might have shown great potential so far, yet a single strike from this man could change that in seconds. However, he wasn't their first problem, as the Ilagites made a miserable attempt to break the Greek blockade. They seized the settlement after this. A foolish move to be honest. I know they expected the Greek allies from Emporion to help in a possible defense of the town, 
After all, they were right beside it. But no. They abandoned the Massalian cry for help, a betrayal the rising nation won't forget. Further inland, one of the armies had returned to Tolosa to improve their infantry. Hilto Hellenic infantry, a mix of the Celtic fighting style and Greek armor to protect them. Fierce warriors only a few dared to cross. The second army, on the other hand, attacked Salduba, a move that gained the interest of the Carthaginian fishers. Knowing they needed to keep pushing but still protect that town, a second army was mustered. It was filled with Iberians who turned to our side. After a bit of logistic work, the march towards Ilerda began. On their way, they met an army trying to counter our attack. To be fair, they did get a proper strike on our ballistae, but nothing more than that. Eumenes the general led siege to the town while the newly mustered army ran around to hunt down stragglers. Some may call this a gamble, as they left Salduba open for Hannibal Barca to take it. But as the second major Massalian army was within a day's march, I would dare to say it was quite safe. However, I can't say the same for Ilerda after Eumenes marched south. The Iberians used his absence and butchered every Massalian and mercenary under their banner. First the loss of the proud navy and now a Greek army. What started as an expedition to establish proper foundations for their future empire became a war of vengeance. Thankfully, the Greco-Hellenic infantry was in a position to enact it. United and determined for revenge, Celts and Greeks alike marched in unison. Eyes locked onto the hill on which the Iberians would make their defense. They used slings to slow us down, which worked for a short time. But as the Massalians realized the enemy could keep going indefinitely, they charged up the hill. May Ares be on our side. 